recording the meeting and go ahead and get started. So again, please put your questions in the chat and then we will um, be able to open it up to questions at the end of the meeting. So um, good evening, everybody. My name is Julie D'Onofrio and I'm here as a part of Penn Praxis. We are a part of the Weizmann School of Design at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I am an urban planner and have uh, worked across the country doing um, growth management plans or land use and um, smart growth plans in a lot of different communities. And so when this opportunity arose, arose to work in Glassboro, it was, it was a really exciting opportunity for us to come and help the borough with some of the issues that you all have been experiencing. But um, we, I am joined today by uh, Katie Levesque. Um, Katie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello everyone, um, like Julie, I'm an urban planner who works with Penn Praxis and I've been in Philadelphia for the last 10 years. So it's been really great to start working with communities that are outside of, of the city that I call my home and, and Glassboro has been such a pleasure to, to work with these past few months. So we're excited to share with you everything we've been putting together. Great. And then representing the borough um, is Ed Melandro. Ed, um, I'm probably sure everybody knows you, but um, if you wouldn't mind saying a little bit about the plan and how um, how we've gotten started and then the purpose of this meeting tonight. Sure, thanks. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As everyone on this call knows, the town has grown by leaps and bounds over the last several years. And mayor and council had thought, you know, we're, none of us are planners. Um, so we thought it would be in the best interest of the town to bring, to bring in a very well-respected planning group like Penn Practice and get their input. We've tried to be as transparent as possible during this whole exercise, hence the, the question and answer tonight. You, you all are going to see a presentation that is still in a conceptual phase, and I can't stress that enough. It is conceptual. And again, we want your input. I appreciate the folks who have signed on. Uh, feel free to ask questions at the end. Um, we were going to make it live interactive. Um, at one point, we had a significant number of people who were registered, and we didn't think that would be the best way to go. So that's why you know we, we're doing it this way. We will do our best to get to every question. If not, if we don't, if we run out of time, you will see a screen. Uh, one of the last screens will tell you where to send your questions, and we promise we will get back to you. So thank you all. Back to you, Julie. Okay, great. So I will start with an overview of the plan and then, um, yeah, feel free to chime in. So um, again, here we're talking about the growth management plan and I'll start with the overview of the project and the timeline, uh, the community vision statement that we created, the goals and strategies that frame the plan, future development priorities, and then we'll have the open community Q&A. <clears throat> So a little bit about what makes a growth management plan. Um, it's a series of recommendations and policies that help guide investments and development, and it's a form of proactive planning. You know, as Ed just mentioned, you know, part of what the borough wants to do now that it's um, growing more than it has in the past is get in front of development before it happens and help shape how infrastructure and land use can work together to make decisions that will make um, the borough function more cohesively and um, each development will lead towards uh, a future vision of what, what the community wants the borough to be. Um, and so a part of that is bringing community stakeholders together to determine what they want to shape that future. And after the stakeholder input, um, we were able to develop a series of strategies that will help the borough to focus growth, spur economic development, and create an enviable quality of life for its residents, which is all things that we know to be true. So the timeline of this project is broken up into three phases where we um, undertook data collection, which generally means you know, collecting data that can be mapped, demographic info about the community, and then having a series of in intelligence meetings, we call them, which is essentially just finding out how things work in the borough, who's doing work, who's developing, and, um, and that phase generally took place in the fall of 2019. Um, we had a community visioning workshop in January of this year. We also put out two uh, community surveys, one that was uh, back in December 
where we went out in person to the Borough of Lights event and then also had it online and issued it to Rowan students, faculty, and staff. And then we also have the survey that is out right now, which you can go ahead and take if you haven't already. Um, through, those two, through those surveys and through the visioning and the stakeholder meetings that we had, we came up with the guiding themes, which we'll get to um, shortly. The second phase of work was working um, through land use scenarios to determine where potential growth could and should go and develop uh, draft strategies. <clears throat> and then the third phase is uh, creating a series of visualizations that help understand what development will look like once it takes place and develop the final plan. Where we are today um, is because of you know, COVID and because of our ability to do engagement this summer, we, we kind of mix the two phases of work and we're doing the community and stakeholder sessions simultaneous to developing the strategies. Um, but really our last step is this meeting tonight, continuing to reach out to specific interest groups and stakeholders, continue to promote uh, the survey being completed, and then we will ultimately create the final growth management plan that the borough will then use to implement these various strategies over time. You know, the next five, 10, 15 years, planning is a long game. And so many of the um, strategies that we will talk about today are things that need to be put in place on a policy level, but it depends on how decisions are made by voters, by developers, by decision makers of the borough to make sure that those create this quality of life over the long term. <clears throat> So here are some of the uh, highlights from the initial survey that we released in the fall and the winter. So we asked community members, how strongly do you agree with the following statements about commerce? Because we understand you know, business development is really important to creating this quality of life. And generally folks agreed that um, Glassboro met shopping needs. Um, there were appealing entertainment options. There are generally jobs available in and around Glassboro, but by and large, um, everyone agreed, almost everyone agreed that the historic character of downtown was really important. So, you know, when we as planners look at that, you know, we, we try to figure out how can we support the um, development that will focus on downtown, but also respect the heritage of the entire community. Um, some other so survey answers that were given that were important for us shaping the vision is, you know, thoughts around housing were generally mixed. You know, you can see here, the question was, housing is affordable and high quality. About an equal number of folks felt that that was not a true statement, did not know or agreed. So, you know, generally housing we know is an area of interest that needs to be worked on. Parks and open spaces were something that folks felt were pretty high quality. And then the public schools were again mixed, but um, the community input was actually a little more positive than we may have expected. You know, people think, thought that um, the, the, the schools were, were of high quality. So this is why gathering this sort of data is really important to understand where the community, um, how the community truly feels versus uh, potential perceptions. <clears throat> um, some things around transportation trends, and these are probably not surprising for you as well but people generally don't feel safe as pedestrians and cyclists, um, feeling that that was an untrue statement to say that it is safe. Um, it's generally not known about how well it's served by public transportation, meaning that it's probably the you know, resources aren't really there or aren't that um, frequent. But then you know, generally there was a lot of agreement about the fact that traffic is getting worse. So you know, while we, you know, traffic can't be solved overnight, and it's one of the biggest challenges in cities of all sizes across the U.S. Um, a lot of the policies that you'll see in this part of, in the uh, presentation later is how do we solve some of those trans traffic issues? Well, it's around the type of density of the uses that are downtown, where a lot of the congestion exists. It's about balancing where jobs are versus where people live. And it's about creating alternative ways to get around that people feel safe for such as pedestrians and cyclists. And it might not be that you know you yourself are the ones 
who are the pedestrian or the cyclist, but that if it's a safe op option for others, then putting in those sorts of infrastructures is crucial to be able to um, kind of ameliorate the traffic demands for everyone as a whole. So question, um, these post-it notes represent uh, statements that were given to us by community members that attended our visioning workshop back in January. And these were vision statements about what people aspire to see or they want to see in the borough in the future. So what do you want for Glassboro's future? Some of these um, are really great. They would like a mixed use neighborhood development, a great place to raise a family, a farmer's market with local vendors, a buzz on high street, a rail line to Philadelphia and Trenton and New York, walkability and other transportation alternatives, meaning fewer cars, connect with Rowan in a mutually beneficial way, and more arts and culture events. So these are all really great aspirational goals for the borough that we could not agree more with that are really important for you know, creating this sort of, of culture and environment that already exists in Glassboro that really could be um, lifted up and supported through more proactive uh, development recommendations. Um, so with that, with all of that framing, that's how we created the vision statement. Um, the vision statement was something that we, um, we put together and has been on the website uh, about this project for the last few months. And as it was, this is really the most important thing about which will help us shape how the policies are created for the plan. So these again are aspirational goals. Um, as Ed said, these are conceptual, but this is, you know, this is the feel good statement that will make people join together around supporting a plan such as this and supporting the policies that come out of them. <clears throat> so residents and stakeholders are proud of Glassboro's small town, family friendly feel, its history, diversity, and wealth of community activities. Rowan University is a point of pride. It distinguishes the borough from its neighbors and brings promise of long-term prosperity. A future Glassboro welcomes and supports Rowan faculty, staff, and students while ensuring its neighborhoods are a comfortable and desirable place to live for families and long-term residents. The community is safe for pedestrians and cyclists with strengthened connections to other regional hubs through public transportation. And finally, the historic character of the downtown is retained, complemented by mixed use, new mixed use development, showcasing the unique talents and culture of Glassboro. So here's some questions about the community vision statement. And this is, these are reflective of the questions that we put in the survey. So you can, the community survey that's online. So you can think about these and pop questions into the chat or you can save these for later. So do you agree with the previous statements about the borough and its future? What resonated the most with you um, about the vision for Glassboro and was there anything that you did not agree with or did not resonate? So we'll let you think about those questions shortly and then we will um, we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so moving on to the goals and strategies. Again, we took the vision statement and then said, you know, as experts in future development and land use, historic preservation, transportation, planning, you know, how do you take those visions that we just put forth and actually make them a reality? Um, and so that's where, you know, the, the technical part of this comes in. So the first of the goals is coordinated development. And so an example of some of the strategies that came out of coordinated development include the following. Work with Rowan University to establish an office of off-campus housing and neighborhood relations staffed by the University of and Borough. So a lot of these uh, policies here have to do with the growth of the university and coordinating um, land use and development decisions between the two. So establishing an office whose sole mission is to do those that do that coordination and create neighborhood relations strategies 
is really critical to managing the growth in the way that the, the borough needs. But in addition to that is getting Rowan students engaged to be involved with community members so that they feel like Glassboro is their home and a place that they want to treat with pride and respect. So some of the nuisances that, that we know are an issue in the community will be, you know, things that, it, you know, the more that Rowan students are engaged, the more that they will want to give back and that they will want to invest in, in Glassboro and also stay here for the long term. So continue to put their tax dollars and invest um, their lives here. Um, so additionally, there's some of the you know, other nuisances like um, you know, traffic congestion and you know, noise and things like that. Um, we know that traffic is probably the number one issue. So one of the ways to get above that is to really work through parking management techniques, which would have to be a joint, um, a joint product of both the university and the borough together to try to make parking slightly more expensive, to permit in different ways, but also to prioritize um, other types of, of um, transportation uses that take cars off the street and really reduces this inflow and outflow of traffic that is directly related to university functions. So all of these are strategies that once the plan is adopted, they will then become something that folks are responsible for doing on a regular basis and then it becomes policy and then it, it creates accountability between the numerous uh, partners to make sure that these things are actually done. So the second um, category of policies is, has to do with house, home, excuse me, housing and homes um, under the umbrella of quality, quality residential neighborhoods. <clears throat> so one of the most powerful tools for determining where future development happens is zoning. And so we've been working with Ed and Borough staff to um, adjust zoning in very specific um, and nuanced ways to make it a little bit harder to develop certain types of development in some areas and make it easier to develop in other areas, um, streamlining the development process to promote mixed use development and student housing where it belongs, you know, closer to the core, and also provide land elsewhere in the borough for high quality residential options that include single family homes, newer homes, larger homes, the types of things that um, Glassboro might not have today, but surrounding boroughs may, and it will bring that sort of tax revenue back into the borough um, to be able to balance out some of the, the tax and fiscal needs. So a lot of that comes back to res uh, property tax, and so being able to provide an appropriate mix of housing is really critical to um, getting, that, um, getting that back. So as I've already somewhat mentioned promoting higher density development um, in downtown and other activity nodes will be able to support other quality of life amenities elsewhere in the borough. So currently a lot of the density is focused around Rowan and around downtown, but there are ways of rethinking you know, parts of Delcy Drive um, and imagining those areas in, in a more um, modern and you know, vertical way so that there could be other development nodes elsewhere other than just downtown. <clears throat> and then, you know, it's really critical to housing to, to get people to stay and invest in the borough. And we know that schools are central to that. Um, we've heard that throughout this process. So the question is, how do you, you improve school quality? Well, it's, it's a chicken or an egg thing, as I'm sure everybody has realized, and one of those is uh, having more housing options that support families, but the other thing is trying to really improve the school quality. And so creating a pipeline for uh, Rowan students and graduates to stay and teach in those schools, they have an excellent education uh, program. So allowing, you know, creating a real mechanism for those people who are already invested in Glassboro to stay um, and to invest in the educational resources here will bring up the quality of the school education, um, while also the housing policies will create more of the um, housing options 
that allow people to, you know, to expand and, and have uh, larger families here. And so over time, uh, successful implementation of these uh, collection of policies will help create, um, again, those higher quality schools and those really stable and cohesive neighborhoods. Um, our third grouping of strategies has to do with uh, economic development. And so um, there are several tools for creating um, really robust and uh, activity-driven commercial corridors. One of those is, are called, is a business improvement district, a bid for short. Um, so the creation of such a bid in Glassboro would allow resources to be targeted towards um, public infrastructure, improvements of, to the public realm, such as lighting and wayfinding, places that, uh, things that make people feel safe, and courting of specific businesses. You know, so in through our through our outreach, we've heard you know anecdotally through conversations, but also through certain interest groups that you know there are certain uses that Glassboro might not have that other cities do. So how could we court specific businesses that make um, that people that make people want to go downtown and um, it to offer really um, amazing entertainment options and draws that, that make it, you know, the place to be, but that also don't infringe on, on other people's quality of life who appreciate um, maybe more quiet and, um, you know, avoid some of those nuisances that we've talked about. Um, to really, secondly, um, many of you probably know that the Glassboro Camden line is a potential light rail that will connect Glassboro to Camden and eventually Philadelphia. And so the area um, you know, successful planning will really make sure that the area that that will eventually um, be developed in will be really full of amenities that will, uh, again, take cars off of the street, but will also create more nodes of mixed use development with, you know, coffee shops, cool places to go that will, will draw people in and discourage them from um, personal vehicle use on a daily basis. Uh, the other ingredient in this uh, grouping of policies has to do with the design. You know, so you could put in new development everywhere, but if it's not really complementary to the built form of the borough as it exists, you know, that historic character that everybody loves, um, then we're not really, you know, getting towards our vision. And so introducing design guidelines um, amid this new development along these commercial corridors and in neighborhoods will make sure that the new development that comes in has a unified appearance that, um, that fits in with the glass for all that everybody already loves and knows and respects. Um, you know, the development that, is, that has happened to date that's been new has, um, has created some really, you know, nice uh, public spaces and you can tell that it's a draw for the whole community and the, the county as a whole and so you know let's continue to do that as um, and promote this high quality design as growth continues. Um, the last grouping of our themes here is community identity. So um, we've heard so much about how, how much people who are from Glassboro love the area um, people are always willing to tell stories, and that really promotes a sense of strong identity and a sense of community ownership. And so going forward, you know, we will work with the borough to make sure that there's a mechanism for, you know, when people come together as a community that it feels good, and it feels like people are uniting around a shared identity, shared um, appreciation for the borough, and we'll also welcome new residents and students and other stakeholders to participate in those conversations so that everyone is um, you know, appreciating the past but also looking towards the future of Glassboro as a place that um, is shared prosperity for everyone. Um, we would also, you know, this is related to design guidelines, which we already talked about, but um, development regulations uh, should be put in place that with each new development, there's an appropriate amount of public space um, and park space that goes with it to make sure that the great public spaces, which I showed in the previous slide, was among one of the more highly ranked public assets in the borough, that we continue to create um, better and more and connected public spaces um, with all the future development that takes place. 
And then finally, um, really engaging um, and uniting Rowan students and alumni, residents and business owners together towards, again, this shared vision of, of creating a Glassboro that everybody wants to be in. Um, you know, throughout this project, we've been talking about, you know, other university towns that perhaps have had similar struggles to Glassboro, but at the end of the day, students want to go to those uh, communities where, where it's just right. You know, there's the right balance of, of long-term residents, of businesses, of public spaces, of entertainment options, of places to be, and, um, and community members take a lot of pride in that as well. And so, you know, that is really the meat of this plan is to get to that point where everything is the symbiotic relationship and both Rowan students and the Rowan community and Glassboro residents and community um, recognize and appreciate um, what each is doing um, to produce this, this great quality of life. Okay, so in thinking about um, what we just went over, thinking to yourself, and we can talk about this in the Q&A, which of the plan's overarching goals are most important to you? This idea of coordinated development, the quality of residential districts, economic opportunity, and community identity. Now, you don't have to choose just one, but um, you know, in thinking through what, the, what policies really resonated with you, you know, think about those and then we can talk about those during the Q&A. Okay, um, another topic that we wanted to discuss with you um, is the, is transportation. Um, so again, this echoes uh, some of the questions that were asked in our community survey, but the, the growth management plan uh, proposes the integration of multimodal transportation within Glassboro to promote connectivity and alleviate vehicular traffic. So which of these transportation alternatives are most important to you? So including robust bus routes, safe bike lanes, or light rail connection to Camden, Philadelphia, and or improved sidewalks and pedestrian crossings. So we have heard a lot of of comments from the community that, you know, downtown has great walkability and that functions well, but what are we doing in the other quarters throughout the borough, you know, like around um, Delcy Drive, or around some of the residential neighborhoods. So one of the things that, that we would do in, or we would um, uh, promote in future development is the idea of improving bus routes, bike lanes, light rail and improved sidewalks. And this, these all um, come about through future development and the de development regulations that are a part of that. All right, and then our last set of questions here is what types of businesses would you like to see when you come to the borough along with new development? What types of events would you like to see more of in Glassboro? And are there existing borough amenities that you feel need improvements or attention? So again, you can think about these questions and then ask them towards the end. All right, so future development priorities. Um, include uh, these these uh, few priorities that we we discussed with um, both borough staff and uh, stakeholders and residents, and we determined that uh, introducing mixed these were the priorities that came out of the plan. So introducing mixed use development along commercial corridors and potential light rail stations, strengthening residential neighborhoods, and concentrating student rentals. So you can let us know in the chat or in the Q&A if these are the priorities that you agree with or if, we, if you think that these need adjustment. And to tell you a little bit about what these look like, you know, what does mixed use development look like? What do we mean when we say this? So the downtown corridor is, you know, pretty much the template for mixed use as we think of it. Um, 
this is what we would promote along downtown and around the corridors that extend around downtown, meaning that the historic bones are able to continue to have this type of pedestrian oriented nature similar to Rowan Boulevard and strengthen connections with adjacent neighborhoods. But the other things that um, you know may not be as obvious are, is the idea of smart growth. Like I mentioned, Delcy Drive are, are these prime areas where areas that currently are a little underutilized and underdeveloped, you know, how could those be um, created to have both commercial uses and residential uses together so that they are creating even more areas where pedestrian um, and, you know, bicycle use rules, people feel safe, and you're able to get there safely by a car so that there's kind of other nodes in this in the borough that are attracting folks um, with this sort of, of lifestyle rather than just downtown. And then TOD stands for Transit Oriented Development. And this is what I was referring to earlier with the um, extension of the Gloucester Camden line with its terminus in Glassboro. Um, the, you know, there are many communities that have, you know, the, the wonderful developments that have taken place right at the terminus of the, of the light rail where, you know, there's shopping amenities, there's uh, stacked mixed uh, types of high density residential that includes, you know, places that students live, but also, you know, younger households. Um, and it creates this really wonderful mix of, of uses that people use throughout the day. Um, you know, people can walk down the stairs and go to the grocery store or, or, you know, the coffee shop. So these are the types of opportunities that exist for Glassboro to take a hold of and start thinking of now so that when that light rail becomes a reality that there's um, a smart development that can be taken place around that, um, around that node. <clears throat> And this is what that could look like. So, you know, this is just one potential area for the, um, the TOD where, um, you know, you have your terminus, you have the, the light rail coming in and then lots of activity and pedestrian uses um, around that, that station. So this is what a future, uh, just one future conceptual vision of that area might look like. Um, and then talking a little bit about housing, we wanted to be really clear about what we mean by a diversity of housing um, contributing to quality residential neighborhoods. Um, you know, there might be a perception that apartments are for a certain type of folks, single families for another, but really it's this balance that we are talking about before. So, you know, single family homes are, um, you know, especially, you know, homes that might be new construction. Um, are, in addition to the existing wonderful neighborhoods that exist, could be for families of all different types of size, types and sizes um, that really want to stay in the borough for the long term, raise a family, have a little bit more space. Uh, there's also a great opportunity for townhouses in this community, which, um, you know, this image here is from Philadelphia. We have lots of these. Um, where there's still a lot of space, but they're a little bit more of a compact, you know, kind of modern lifestyle um, that might be more appropriate for smaller families or young professionals, you know, the types of folks who would love to stay in, in Glassboro for the long term if the right type of housing existed. Um, but these are, you know, apt to be developed closer to downtown and are, um, we know, or some of these activity nodes and really promote walking and biking and um, a little bit more of a compact lifestyle. And then apartments, um, there's a lot of these in Glassboro and many of them may be for students, but there's also a really um, a big need here that we heard that um, smaller units for uh, single professionals or smaller, um, you know, couples that want a higher quality type of rental unit or a condo unit. And so this type of housing is needed for a lot of the population, not just students. And so while we know that a lot of these developments have already happened or might be in line, there are certainly um, lots of opportunities for bringing in more of this product and the, that will help support more commercial development and more, um, more support for the infrastructure upgrades that we discussed in terms of um, incentivizing light rail and 
sidewalk improvements. So now uh, that concludes the presentation and we know that you all must have additional questions about, um, about the growth management plan, many of which we've already kind of peppered with the questions that we had throughout the presentation. Um, but you know, this is when we're going to open it up to the Q&A. And um, if you have additional questions, we will try to get to all of them tonight uh, in the next few minutes that remain. But if you have additional questions, uh, we can put these up at the end. Um, you can contact info at glassboro.org. You can also um, visit the page on the Glassboro website, Shaping the Future of Glassboro, and that has a link to the vision statement and the community survey that is still currently open where you can go in and answer all the questions that we just posed here today. So um, with that, I will look um, into the chat and I know um, Katie is, is helping to, to look at some of those and will you know, help uh, determine how we answer these questions and, and whether I should answer them or Ed. So um, I see a few here. So Katie, can you, uh, let let us know who should answer or invite. Um, I see Dana has asked a question. Um, allow Dana to ask the question aloud. Yeah, Dana has has a few, so I don't know if maybe um, we want to let her ask her mm -hmm. priority first, and they're probably ones for for you and I at this point. And and Ed, we can uh, have you chime in if if there's something that we need you to answer on your end. Mm -hmm. okay. Hello. Hi, Dana, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Julie? Doing well. How are you? I'm Katie. Very good. Um, did you want me to read these to you? I, I know you can see them there <laughs> in the chat. I, I want to just follow whatever protocol you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I think you can just um, ask them in a in a natural way. You know, like you can ask them, um, you can read them, or you can just say them as you, you know as you would like, we could talk, kind of talk about them in a series, but yeah, just ask them as if you would if we were okay. in a person community meeting. <laughs> so uh, you've mentioned that you've had a series of different types of information gathering, meeting with different stakeholders and mm -hmm. um, people who, who have an interest in the future Glassboro that you're looking to bring to fruition. So I'm just wondering which developers have been in this mix? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we met with, um, met with many of the, the developers that are active in Glassboro. Um, we met with Nexus, we met with Ingerman. I think that might be it. Um, I, Katie might let, uh, let me know if I'm misremembering that. But then also, you know, Rowan is a major landowner. And so, you know, we spoke to them in terms of their future development plans as well. Um, and we met with a number of Rowan, um, different Rowan offices. So it wasn't just the, the one, it was, uh, it was several, so. Uh, I don't know if, if you have seen this, but we have pr uh, presented to Ed a development plan for, um, I guess I would call it West Street, but bounded by West, and uh and delcy crossing the landmark do you happen to have has that ever crossed your vision is that something you're familiar with i don't believe so no and um dana who are you representing are you with a developer or are you um like uh, when yeah you, okay well, well i guess um, <laughs> i am basically who you're aiming <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm right. going to make your dreams come true. I am the Rowan <laughs> student, alumni, first time home buyer in Glassboro, and now business owner in Glassboro. And probably, I, I mean, Ed could totally agree with this, right, Ed? Um, no one has, has struggled harder than my husband and I to get to the table to try to develop something. So we really mm -hmm. look forward to meeting with you. Yeah, Dana, I just want to add clarity um, to it. When, when Julie says we met with developers, we met with existing developers and, and addressed the work that they've already done. We have not mm -hmm. gone out and brought in any developers and say, what do you think at this point? We have done zero of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
This is, again, purely conceptual, and the developers were to give us their feedback of what they've experienced in the development that they were doing. And in the case of Ingerman, their project actually did not even get off of the ground because of mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, you know, in reading, you know, thanks for clarifying um, where you've, you've been working. And it's nice to meet you and hear about that, that you're the dream, <laughs> the dream resident. Um, but I think in terms of the, the zoning changes, those are things that we've been working through with um, the borough office. You know, rewriting the zoning code is a whole nother project. Um, but like, you know, at least discussing what it would look like to have a mixed use category in some parts of downtown and Delphi that would allow development to happen in a streamlined way, but also in this, um, in this direction towards, you know, design guidelines, and having things address the street and, um, you know, be more dense and, um, and complementary to existing land uses is, is really the aim for that. So it's like, when we say streamlined development, it doesn't make things like, oh, ever any, uh, the doors are open. It more just means like, if they, uh, if they reach the overarching goals of the plan, then yes, they can be streamlined. So I think that, um, you know, that's a process that we're still beginning um, as a part of this, you know, it comes after the vision, it's a part of implementation. But like, if you're saying as a developer that like, you'd be in favor of that sort of change, <coughs> then, I, then I think that that's something that um, is helpful to know. Yeah, and, and could we be specific about what parts of Delcy? I mean, it's obviously rather long. Um, block and lot or? We're not, uh, I'll take that. I mean, Dana, mm -hmm. again, as I said in the opening remarks, this is purely, purely conceptual at this point. So we don't have lots and blocks. We, we haven't gotten that far mm -hmm. at this point. We're not even close to that. And if I may really quick, um, and to, to Ed's point, when when the borough decides where there's a good fit for a new developer to come in or a project that they really have uh, the potential to get off the ground, that's also where streamlining development comes in. If there's a really attractive parcel that the borough has its hands on and wants to move, then they would work harder to make sure that that development is prioritized as, as an anchor institution for, for new development to continue down Delcy Drive or a different corridor. But at this stage, we're, we're not in, in, um, in the ability to make a decisions on, on specific locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I have a couple more, but I don't want to be greedy, so I want to let someone else have a chance to talk. <laughs> Um, Thanks, great. So maybe we'll switch over to, to NAD real quick, and, and then um, we have a few other questions we'll, we'll uh, go through, but Dana, you know, we'd love to return back to you if you want to hang out with us for a bit longer, too. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll bring up the next. Uh, hi. This is Dan Ryan. Uh, my name backwards is NAD for... Gmail. Got it. Excuse me. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say that uh, this is my first meeting I've attended on this subject. I, I didn't know this process was going on in Glassboro, and I guess it's shame on me, but you seem to have hit all the high notes. I, I want to compliment you. Uh, much of what you said tonight is spot on. I, I formerly worked in New Jersey DEP, and I was the representative of the Smart Growth Planning Commission in Trenton for a number of years. And many of the policies you're promoting here are, are very good ones and, and are very sound. Uh, <clears throat> I had one question though on the rentals. Are the rentals increasing, decreasing, or stable, that population? And I don't want to, you don't have to give me an exact number, but it, it, are we kind of at the saturation point now, or do you foresee? And that's the reason you're planning a lot of this, <clears throat> that this could double or triple in the future. I mean, do you have a feel for that? Yeah, um, I'm going to ask, answer the question, but then I'll caveat it in a way that almost everything has to be caveated in 2020. Um, you know, we, there, we did do some analysis um, and it had to do with sales, but then also the nature of the sales. So what was being sold to people out of town? Um, versus, um, you know, or between family members, like some of those things that were being done to change ownership. Um, and they were starting to level off. So in terms of, um, 
of a saturation point that seems to be related to the you know the growth of rowan overall and um you know kind of both were seeming to not end but level off and but then that was in february 2020 and then you know COVID happened and so those um i think this that continues to be a turning point though in terms of getting in front of rentals from a policy standpoint because you know the rent the real estate market will will likely be changed significantly by um, what's happening right now and if it drops lower then it will be a opportune time for um you know property owners to come in and flip homes which is what happened in the um in the early you know a decade ago which is when a lot of purchases were made and then they were flipped and then when rowan was growing that's when you know the 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 issue came to a head and so i think it's a matter of like some of our policies if you know if you want to read the fine print once we finalize this plan we'll have to do with how can we you know make um kind of inhibit that that action happening again um but it's really about the real estate cycle more than anything and, and the reason i asked that there's there's a a second like a nuance to this I had the opportunity to talk to one of the uh, landlords in Glassboro last year, has a number of homes in town. They indicated to me that they've hired legal counsel to represent them on their interest, which is natural. I understand that. <clears throat> but how do I say this? Some of what they want to do is not what the community wants to do or you're trying to do in this plan, for instance. Mm -hmm. How do we bridge that gap where you're in court all the time? And, and I'll give you just a small example. Around the street from me on Fairmont Avenue, there's parking on both sides of the street now all night long, which never used to exist. And you can barely get through the street driving mm -hmm. in the center. And I know that's a safety hazard, but they probably won that in court. And so the borough can't stop them, for instance. Mm -hmm. How do we get to a win-win here where they lay down their swords and they start working with us on some of these quality of life issues in the town, for instance? Oh, yeah, I think that's a tough one because we have been, um, it's really hard to get, you know, folks who are out of town, landowners perhaps, to see those issues and want to, um, you know, improve quality of life you know if they are you know if it's they live across the street and it's a rental they would, they would feel differently but i think what we have is a lot of absentee landlords and um i mean i think that that's an issue throughout i mean everywhere not just glassboro but you know i we ed and i and others have been talking about this throughout this whole project that it's how do you kind of change policy in a way that's mutually beneficial without it being like every change is a lawsuit um and right. so right those are those are things that again if you get in front of these policies and be proactive then you can avoid that down the road which like saves everybody time and resources but that's why it's important to do this now that we you know want to know we we kind of are clear on what a vision a community endorsed vision is but to you know do everything really specifically so that it's it's um you know we haven't necessarily you can't necessarily have a focus group from out of town absentee landlords you know they probably won't go <laughs> but um you know i think we'll be addressing issues like that kind of piece by piece when looking at the zoning and looking at some of the other transportation rules um a lot of it is regulatory in terms of you know things like parking management so it's like how do we look at parking management cohesively as a borough both from rowan all the way into um the public streets rather than just like targeting certain areas. Right. Um, I mean, if you used to work at the Office of Smart Growth, you probably um, have heard of a lot of other examples of, of things like this happening in the state of New Jersey, because, you know, also every state has different policies when it comes to these sorts of things. And so, you know, what happens in Pennsylvania might be different than what happens in New Jersey. And so, um, yeah, perhaps you you have a, maybe we should talk offline about other examples that you <laughs> that you've experienced. But yeah, um, to answer your question, we're working on that kind of in the nitty gritty of the plan. But um, well, thank you very much. Uh, good job so far. I like yeah, it. thank you for your question. Nice to meet you. So we're going to go ahead and bring on Joseph now. Okay. Uh, 
this I, is Joe, I Joe Brigandi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Sir, can I? Okay. Um, nice to see you again, Julie. Nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, so, as you know, um, since I was kind of involved with this in the beginning, how important I believe the um, development of entertainment venues uh, in the entertainment district and downtown in particular is important to the success of um, the entire development of the downtown and the um, whole borough, the borough as a whole. So I guess my question is what approach will you take uh, or approaches to encourage entertainment development in the downtown and particularly on high street um that's a great question i think um i think that we would look towards the development of of a bid and um if that bid were created then there would be additional resources and um man or woman power to you know ha have their be their job to do this sort of of economic development courting you know, um, the borough has a pretty small staff and, you know, there's, in order to have this, you know, sort of nuanced sort of, of business recruitment and business development, um, you know, that's what uh, a bid could do to kind of be that arm for promoting a certain type of use within um, downtown. Now, if a bid is not an option or that doesn't come to fruition, you know, I think it's still important to, that the, the borough develop you know just kind of like a package of what exactly we mean what we mean when we say entertainment uses and like because i know that's something that the borough has been looking trying to work on for a while on high street in particular but you know perhaps that district is expanded to include you know a future development area so um you know it would be having to put in writing what exactly is the use and be very specific about that is that a um is it a coffee shop that has you know live music at night or is it something larger and more significant um and so you know we could you know put together a series of recommendations as part of the implementation plan as to what exactly those uses are based on community input and what the square footage needs would be for those what would be some hin what would hinder um, land, um, tenants from coming in, like what are some roadblocks to be aware of, so that, um, you know, people, it's very streamlined and clear what exactly is needed versus what is not. Um, so I think, Joe, like we haven't actually formulated what that package would look like because it's part of the implementation that would come out of this, but it's important to know that that is you know, important to you and, you know, something that the borough should really prioritize in terms of implementation. So, I mean, I think what this plan did in addition to the work you've already done is kind of expand the thinking of what, what, where these entertainment uses could be. Um, but we also have the support from the engagement that we did to validate that that's absolutely what is, is needed and wanted here. And so you can't refute that you know, if, if anyone was a naysayer to having entertainment options, it's something that uh, the community input has shown is really valued and needed here. So it should really help um, the public process behind them. Mm -hmm. Julie, what about the um, possibility of uh, using some best practices, whether it's stuff you've done at Penn or any of the other the universities that you guys have worked on? I know my uh, <clears throat> the university I graduated from is Rutgers in New Brunswick, and um, I know they've done quite a bit. Um, they don't, you know, I'm not sure whether they have a bid or not, but obviously they have Devco, Devco, which is a strong organization that works with the town, the county, state, and the university. Um, but um, you know, working with the legislators and stuff like that, they actually. Uh, got some special legislation to help fund pieces of that mixed use development, which included housing and all other kinds of uses included in with the uh, entertainment um, 
and by doing special legislation, you're able to get funding to help make the, the numbers work. So are we, are we looking at any of those types of best practices or what, what's been done in other uh, locations to try to help um, make it easier for this to actually become a reality? Yeah, I mean, we, we've done a lot of case study research. A lot of it has been around the kind of town gown interface issues with the university. Um, we we um, frankly did not, we haven't dug into this entertainment use piece, um, to be honest with you, as much as some of the other issues, but we certainly could. Um, if if that, you know, we can go and, dis and discuss with, um, Ed and others, you know, if that's something that that needs, um, you know, kind of more guidance, that's something that we can work on. But yeah, most we um, we created a case study for bid development. Um, we included um, a, a case study from Philadelphia, the Past Young Avenue Revitalization Corporation, which um, was established precisely with this aim of courting specific development um, that would create this balance of um you know of places to work and eat and recreate and um have entertainment and um i can tell you because i live there that they are extremely successful in in what they have done um but you know i think they've been around for 20 years so you know these things take time but um again i answered the question previously to say a bid might not be um what the borough needs or wants but so how could we do those same activities without the establishment of a bid and i think that really comes down to staffing and capacity because this is hard stuff and it needs to be something that some a single person works on every day um that is like their primary their primary function um to do business recruitment and um, uh, uh, yeah i would agree with that and i was i was all for about four or five years ago uh, a bid we actually had a study done and recommended one but unfortunately uh, when we met with the business people and some of the biggest property owners um, there was objections they just didn't feel like there was enough density there yet and it would just be too costly for the individual property owners uh, to make it worth it uh, hopefully that's changing or going to change in the future because I really think a bid would be a great thing, but you're right. If it's not a bid, um, it needs to be something where it's not a bunch of volunteers. It's something you need to handle, uh, hand to a staff member or, you know, people that are working pretty much full time to make stuff like that happen. So hopefully one way or the other, um, the borough can figure out a way to make that happen. Great. Well, um, thanks for raising that because, um, you know, that's a, a good priority for us to focus on. Okay, okay. And so if I could just okay. add, I mean, we, I don't, again, this is, this is still in its conceptual phase and we, what we've tried to do with pen practice and maybe we're not as far along as we should be. And I'm not making an excuse because of, because of COVID, mm -hmm. but I don't think we, I know we have not gotten down to specifics yet concerning, you know, if, if the entertainment district is going to be high street, I think we, I know at this point we've identified and what we're trying to share with the community is here's what we see is going on and here's where we're thinking there's needs and then take that what you guys don't see is so there's an implementation plan that's probably three to four pages long and to the point that's brought up one of my biggest fears in, in taking that next steps with all of this is how do you accomplish this and I think what we're going to have to do is take bite-sized pieces and that comes along in the process as mayor, council, the community, we take everything, we take all the input, and we say, here's what's most important, and then we act on those pieces. At least that's how I envision it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. And I, uh, you know, I, I'll offer my volunteer time for, you know, anybody that needs it to try to help move things along when you guys decide what directions you're you're going in but um you know i appreciate the work that you guys have done to this point and hopefully um you know in spite of covid we'll get you know to a finished product so that we could start actually implementing some of these things but thank you very much for the presentation and for your time
Thanks, Joe. Um, and yeah, thank you for for your advice and um, support throughout. Uh, we're, we're fairly close, so we will be getting towards that, that completed plan very soon. Um, okay, so I think we had a few more questions that came up in the Q&A that, that Katie will pose. Yeah, so these came in as uh, anonymous, so forgive me if somebody wanted to ask in person, you can always raise your mm -hmm. hand and we'll, we'll call on you to bring you up as well. But there's some chatter around the light rail and the possibility of that happening. We are aware that it's been in the works for a long time. Caveat again, things are obviously different than they were a year ago for what that might look like because of funding in the different state that we're in right now. But I think it's still a desire that a lot of people in this area have and we're working under the impression that at some day that might happen as Julie stated kind of in the very beginning of this presentation, a growth management plan isn't necessarily going to be things that all happen in the next six months to a year. It's going to be things that might happen over the next 15 or 20 years and how do we set Glassboro up to be best prepared for that. So our suggestions around the Glassboro Camden line aren't saying for sure it's happening, but we're hoping to give the borough a good footing to stand on if that gets greenlit and if that's something that they and you all want to continue to push for, you know, that's that's what we're here to help with that development. Um, there were questions about what the traffic might be if that happens, and also if the new development around Delphi Drive kicks off, what that might mean for, for traffic. Um, and I think that's where we want to pull back to the different improvements that we're suggesting and hoping to implement throughout the borough around pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, Glassboro is unique for the surrounding areas and that it is relatively compact, which means that if given the option and people feel safe, a lot of a lot of people would love to, to walk places or to bike places, particularly students who just don't see that as an option. So hopefully that will take a lot of cars off the road if you're just hopping over to Delphi Drive or something really quickly or running down to Rowan Boulevard, you no longer have to get in your car, find parking, fight that traffic. And also there's a lot of studies and planning that if you keep making a road wider so more cars can get on it, you're not actually solving the traffic problem, you're just encouraging more people to drive on that road. So something that a lot of cities have been doing recently are, are called road diets, which are what they sound like. It's making the roads smaller and in doing that and encouraging fewer people to use it and to find other ways to get around besides cars, um, they've actually had a lot of success in managing traffic even in higher areas. Um, and so we kind of see those being implemented with the new developments that we are encouraging for Glassboro and actually um, part of the requirements that Julie spoke to would be that you have to invest in some of these different improvements if you're going to develop in these areas. So we really see that as being a plus side to managing traffic and not encouraging more people to be driving on that, those roads. It's obviously going to be um, fine-tuned as, as that development happens, but by laying this groundwork, we're hoping to get in front of it for everyone. Um, so we don't, we're not terribly concerned about that um, at the moment, we think that the, the bigger density and higher development is actually a good way to control traffic. It also, if we do mixed use developments, you have people who are living above the grocery store that they're now shopping in. So it's less people having to drive to get places because they already live exactly where they wanna go um, and it encourages that walkability. So hopefully those will be areas that we can focus in on to help change the traffic patterns among bigger things that we'd be doing for the borough that are um, in existing without the development. Is there any? So I think those are all of the. We do have another question about traffic um, at times of day, and that would be something that we're hoping to work with with Rowan about. We're aware that at class letouts, um, at the end of a work shift, these are big uh, times when cars are just kind of thrown out onto the road. We're also really aware that there's an issue with pedestrians crossing. Uh, the route that bisects Rowan's campus, so figuring out pedestrian crossings for that and ways to allow people to cross safely without having to interrupt traffic. Um, so we're definitely aware of all those things and we're putting some of that in the economic development spectrum and we're also putting some of that in the coordinated development and that's something that hopefully Rowan can help us work through in terms of what Julie said about parking and, and different patterns that would help curb the use of students um, and cars within, within the borough and that's kind of a big source of the traffic right now. So hopefully by getting in front of that, we can start stemming some of those. Um, let's see. Well, those might be all of the ones that we didn't touch on in the Q&A right now. I don't know if anyone else has um, a question they'd like to pose to us in the last few minutes if you wanted to, to raise a hand. And we do, Julie, we do have one question about um, what the adjustments in zoning might be. I don't know if you want to speak to that really quickly. 
Sure. So again, this is something that um, is conceptual at this time, but in looking kind of under the hood of the zoning code, we found that, um, as we've already talked about, adding a category for mixed use, which would streamline the mixed use development process, um, is important and kind of expanding the area where that would be. You know, mixed use kind of already works in principle, as we've seen by Rome Boulevard, but it's not really codified. And so codifying that would make it just um, kind of more transparent. Um, and then the other areas, um, there's a lot of residential zoning categories that are, are somewhat, um, they overlap a bit. And so we would recommend, again, this is something that would need to be part of implementation, recommend making those a little bit more specific so that it was very clear where certain types of housing typologies um, went and they weren't overlapping. So like right now, the you know high, medium, and low, there are a lot of kind of housing typologies that can fit in, in all three of them. And so um, again, this is just a recommendation that it would be worthwhile to work with a zoning consultant to see if those could be, um, you know, just clarified in a way. Um, and then, you know, we've discussed, you know, expanding where um, some of where those districts might go. And this kind of balance, this goes again to you know, your smart growth principles to um, echo what Dan was saying that, you know, how, where are residential areas balanced with office use? Like where are jobs being developed? How much is creating job development a priority within the borough? Um, and then are the land uses matching that? And so our zoning exercise was really just to make sure that the priorities of the row were being matched in the zoning code. And so um, that is definitely still a work in progress because changing the zoning is no small feat. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, so far it seems like, um, you know, the folks we've been talking to have been receptive. And so it feels like something that could be, um, a possibility for the future that would help us solve a lot of these problems. And then Ed, we had really quickly um, just a question about liquor licenses. I don't know if you wanted to address that. Somebody was just wondering if they would be expanded and that's not something that's necessarily in the purview of this plan, um, but Ed, I don't know if you wanted to speak to liquor that. License, liquor license themselves are predicated off of the number of citizens you have. And I wanna say it's one liquor license for every three or 4,000. So. I mean, we have concessionaires license, which is a whole different ball game on Rowan Boulevard. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll look at that as opportunities present itself. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so Joe has another question. Um, yeah, I think as, as we've already mentioned, we will um, be finalizing the plan in the next um, hopefully month or so, a lot of those will uh, change on on some of these kind of lingering conversations that we need to um, reach out to Rowan and a couple other key players in everything that we just talked about. You know, we can't have a policy about Rowan if they're not in agreement. Um, and in terms of the plan of action, that will be a piece of the plan that goes that is developed alongside that finalized plan. So. Um, and Joe, just so you know, like that basically takes every policy and puts at, put with puts with it a timeline, and then who's in charge. And um, so that timeline might be five to ten years for some of these various um, some of the various policies because that's how long they might take. So we'll be working side by side with um, the borough staff to go through policies one by one and say, you know, this is a one to five year. Uh, plan and then this another one might be a um, five to ten year and then as Katie and I both said around the the TOD stop that's contingent on kind of factors outside of our control um, but that so that could be developed in probably ten years give or take but you know really controlling the land around that future terminus is something that the borough can do now and to the point about courting specific um, uh, tenants or land use types, like that is the type of work that, that could begin. But again, like we alluded to this before, this comes to down to capacity. 
and it comes down to priority. So it's really, you know, there's going to have to be some internal work that happens too, to say like, if there are 30 things that we want to do, what are the things that need to happen first? And so part of that plan of action is going to be, you know, drilling down as to, you know, what do we need to work on first and what we, what can we do with the existing um, staff that we have? Okay. Um, let's see, Katie, were there any other, is any Q&A or hands being risen? I think we've got everything to date. If there's any last minute questions that anyone had, now would be the time to either throw it in the chat for us, or if you wanted to raise your hand and ask it um, live before we wrap up. Uh, yeah, this is Joe Brigandi. Just one more quick question um, regarding the uh, <clears throat> arts and entertainment again. Uh, is part of the recommendation going to be to uh, at some point reach out to uh, the Rowan faculty, st uh, staff, um, and students, particularly in the area of performing arts, whether it be dance or music or you know whatever different fields they have in that area to get active and doing you know doing things in the d downtown uh that will make them want to be more um involved in the downtown which hopefully even if it's just doing little things in the town square once in a while or whatever where people can come and watch them perform or whatever and uh you know so that they'll feel like they have a stake in it. And I think that would in turn help the, the businesses that are there. So that's that's my question. Yeah, I mean, all of these are possibilities, Joe. I think, um, you know, Rowan already has a lot of great programs, um, you know, working with, you know, art students work um, with some of the schools, um, younger kids in the public schools. Um, and, you know, there's STEAM education uh, outreach programs. So there's already, I'm sure you know this, but there's already a lot of great programs. So I think it's just a matter of uniting them and amplifying them and tying them to a policy that um, kind of is, is codified so that it, um, you know, these things just aren't happening in a vacuum and they're all like helping to reach towards this vision that the borough has. So again, that's a specific question about implementation around that, that specific uh, entertainment piece, but for sure, each and every one of these policies as they're implemented will involve their own unique sort of outreach. And so uh, that can happen as a part of that outreach, but we'll we'll take that recommendation um, from you. Right. I will also say, Joe, that uh, we heard from a lot of students who are interested in getting involved with their with their own arts and abilities downtown or, or as, a, as a member of, of Glassboro who really took it upon themselves to let us know that they we're excited about other opportunities for, for arts and culture and entertainment. So I think that there's a, a ready and willing um, supply of those students who want to get involved. And that might be is a piece for the, the joint office that we're hoping that Rowan mm -hmm. and the borough can, can come together with to, to start implementing. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. All right, well, um, yeah, if there's no more questions, and of course you can raise your hand or pop them in the, in the chat. Um, but I think certainly our, our ears and our uh, survey and our inboxes are open. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to the, the email on the screen um, to you know, follow up on some of these questions to tell us how you'd like to be involved in the implementation. You know, this is, you know, as we alluded to, gonna take a lot of work, but it's good to know where community interest lies. So, um, you know, it would be great to know uh, kind of what stood out to you. Uh, it would be great if you could share the survey with your colleagues, neighbors, um, you know, relatives, anything, because the more community input that we have, the more that it creates an opportunity for, you know, supporting this sort of policy development because, um, you know, this is, this is hard work, but it's important work. And so being able to, you know, have these, this type of community consensus is really important in, um, in, in caring for these, these larger goals. Um, so, um, 
Yeah, and I think uh, Dana, we um, will work with we'll work with Ed because I know that he's been in conversation with you, and so you know, as a part of um, the these last few steps, we will be um, having a few more conversations. So so I'll discuss that with Ed, and we can we can go from there. But um, really appreciate your your input and your enthusiasm um, for for this work. We're excited about it, and we've loved working in Glassboro, learning about the community and, um, you know, discovering it's, it's great, it's wonderful assets and we would, um, we look forward to next steps. Ed, is there anything else you would like to say in closing? No, I'd like to thank everyone for joining the call. I appreciate the questions and uh, we are very excited about this. I'm glad that we've brought professionals like you ladies on and um, we're excited and I think it's the right thing to do to shape Glassboro for the future. <laughs> Wonderful. Yep. And thanks to everyone who, you know, supported this from the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely we look forward to continuing to work with all of you and hope you have a pleasant night. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you all.